On this week's show, we kick off the winter sports season at Red and White Night, go behind the scenes at Christmas Lessons and Carols, find out what you like most about Turkey Term, and follow Stanley House as it illuminates an important issue. Lawrenceville's 10-minute newscast begins right now. From the studios inside the Lawrenceville School's historic Pop Hall, this is L10 with Aiden Duffy. Hello and welcome to this week's show. The Times of Trenton has named Big Red Girls Varsity Field Hockey the Team of the Year, adding to the accolades this Triple Crown winning squad has garnered this season. The Times praised the team's powerhouse offense as well as its tireless determination. On Saturday, November 18th, the Big Red Robotics team competed at the Fall Harvest Meet at Cherokee High School South in Marlton, New Jersey. Big Red finished sixth in the preliminary rounds, and after forming alliances with two other New Jersey teams, the Williamstown Bravenators and the Egg Harbor Township Enforcers, won the competition. The team will compete again in the P-Town Throwdown on December 9 at Stewart Country Day School. Grace Jiang, class of 2018, and Jacqueline Chen, class of 2021, placed first and second respectively in their age groups at the 2017 New Jersey Music Teachers Association Young Musicians Piano Competition. Zhang's win earned her a spot in the winner's recital held on Sunday, November 19th at the Westminster Choir College in Princeton, New Jersey. L10 Zone Justin Wong, class of 2018, is developing a research aid for the Trenton Free Public Library. As part of his Healy Scholar re research, Wong is describing and organizing material related to the development of unions in Trenton between 1940 and 1970. He hopes to enable researchers to easily access important documents and information. Last Friday, the energy was high at the varsity court as Laurentians turned out for the annual Red and White Night, celebrating the start of the winter sports season. Jeremy Huang has the details. I'm here moments away from the 26th annual Red and White Night, where the boys and girls varsity basketball teams will debut for the 2017-2018 season. So I'm here with two of our postgraduates. Uh, what are you guys looking forward to this season? You know, I'm new here and uh, looking, looking forward to a good season. I'm excited and looking forward to having a good time. Playing some new competition, bunch of new kids. It's good to get out there looking to see how we can do. And what are you most looking forward to in Red and White Night today? Dunk contest. <laughs> um, no, I'm just excited. I heard it's a lot of fun and uh, just it's great to give back to all the fans and hopefully we can get a good, good few fans that come out every night. And from a player's perspective, how's the team chemistry and the team looking this day? Uh, I think we're looking good. We haven't had that many practices, but it seems like we've been playing together forever. So it's a good start. So Coach Kane, could you tell us a little bit about the history of Red and White Night? This is the 26th annual Red and White Night. It started 26 years ago. It's, it certainly wasn't as elaborate as this in terms of fan participation, um, but it's a longstanding tradition. And what is your favorite part of this tradition? I would say all parts. I mean, I really appreciate the effort that the girls put into the dance performances. Um, and really, it's twofold. I mean, it's an opportunity for the student body to meet our basketball team and both teams, the boys and girls teams. And then it's also an opportunity for us to give forward and provide a fun night of fan participation. Yeah, I'm sure everyone wants to know, how will the boys varsity team be looking this year? Hey, we're working hard. If the intensity and, and early chemistry is any indication or any sign, we're going to have a terrific season. All right, all looking good. Thank you very much, Coach. Tell us a little bit about the preparation for the dance. We finished the choreography Monday and then started teaching it and then like finalized it after the first practice. The today. girls were awesome. They would yeah. like practice. They'd like come seek us out outside of practice to rehearse. Mm -hmm. I was up at like 7.30 rehearsing with a girl like in the morning in the KC lobby. Everybody was awesome. From Red and White Night, I'm Jeremy Huang. Thank you, Jeremy. On December 13th, the Lawrenceville School community will gather by candlelight for the annual Christmas service of Lessons and Carols. Senior arts correspondent Brittany Sun talks with Robert Palmer, director of music, and performers as they prepare for the celebration. So, Mr. Palmer, what will Laurentians be singing at this year's Lessons and Carols? This year we have a selection of nine carols. There are, they range across a wide time span. The styles are widely varied. 
They range from pop standards, Silver Bells, a song that comes out of the 1950s in the Great American Songbook, all the way to traditional English carols, a, a wonderful Austrian carol. We're singing two classical compositions by Haydn, one also by Mendelssohn, and then a traditional setting we love to close with, Sure on This Shining Night, by the American composer, Morton Lauritsen. So what kind of preparation goes into an event like this? Well, that's a wonderful question in many ways uh, because uh, it's both the Laurentians and Lawrenceville singers that are, will come together to sing. It involves learning in stages the music. We have Latin and German in addition to English, so we've had a lot of diction to learn, learning the languages. And then uh, in many ways the most challenging thing we have to do, we start now, which is to actually take our work that we've done in Clark over to the chapel and adjust the way we listen and the way we sing to that room. Lessons and Carols is a great time for everyone in the community to kind of come together. We've been working really hard on some really cool music that Palmer's picked out for us this year and I think it's just a time for us to kind of be together and feel the magic of the holidays before we go for break. Well it's been a great ride since I've been here since freshman year. I really got to experience Lessons and Carols now for almost four years. It's pretty bittersweet now as we come to our last Lessons and Carols our senior year. Yeah, it's nice to see the journey from uh, sophomore year being in Lawrenceville Singers to now being a leader in the uh, Laurentians. It's nice to see our last Lessons and Carols come together. And uh, we have a lot of good song selections, so it should be a good show. One, One two, two, three. Come to Lessons and Carols. <laughs> Thank you, Brittany. The weeks after Thanksgiving, before winter break, affectionately known as Turkey Term, allow students to connect while campus is aglow and holiday spirit abounds. Kobia Champong finds out what makes this time of year so special. All right, Dickinsonians, what's your favorite part about Turkey Term? Uh, beginning of hockey season. Definitely the Dickinson run. I like that it's shorter and there's not as many assessments in a lot of the subjects and there's more time to kind of just like hang out with your friends and enjoy the last few moments before winter break. My favorite part about Turkey Term is house banquets because we all have to get together to house one more time before a long winter break. Uh, my favorite part of Turkey Term is Lessons and Carols because it's really pretty and it helps us all to get in the mood of the holiday spirit before we leave for break. My favorite part about Turkey Term is that it's short and sweet. Just the, the short amount of time that we get to go to school and we get to cherish it with every ounce of our heart. Winter Fest rehearsals. Um, making gingerbread houses with kids from Trenton and the Stevens gingerbread making party. All right, what is your favorite part about Turkey Turn? Uh, 15 days until break and wood tea. What should people expect to see when they go to wood tea? The best tea on campus, a great socializing event, um, and just a lot of you know friends coming together. How would you compare the stress levels of Turkey Term to other terms during the school year? Uh, more stressful. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Turkey term is a little bit harder because it's all compacted into two and a half weeks. So on my second week, I have a lot of major assignments, but this week will help me <laughs> prepare for them. Yeah, I would agree. It's starting to pick up now. A lot of major assignments coming, so it's pretty stressful. How would you compare the stress levels of turkey term to other terms during the school year? Not that stressful. I think turkey term is less stressful because you don't have finals at the end of the term, so it's a lot more chill. Okay. Look. okay. I also think that the teachers do a good job of letting us know when our major assignments are for turkey term. Thank you, Kobe. And finally tonight, Stanley House lights up Main Street with luminaries to support Women's Space, a local charity bringing hope to families impacted by domestic and sexual violence. Isabella Feinberg brings us the report. Could you tell me a little bit about the luminary event that's happening on Monday? So on Monday at 4.30, a bunch of students are coming out and we have paper bags with candles in them and we'll be lighting them all across Main Street and they go to raise awareness and money for Women's Space, an organization that helps families escaping domestic violence. Why is it important to have this event every year? Um, we were talking to Ms. Cantley, the, one of the directors of community service here at Lawrenceville, and she was saying that when she was talking to the Women's Space organization, they were really upset because each year less and less communities 
to participate in this event of lighting the luminaries and she's just so thankful that Lawrenceville every year does this event and it's such a hit. How does it feel to be a part of setting up the luminaries tonight? Um, it's really nice to see all of Main Street covered in these luminaries and watching all the Laurentians come together and light the luminaries. It's really inspiring because after all of last week, Stanley House really came together to sell the luminaries in Irwin during lunch and dinner. And they gave up a lot of time which they could have spent like eating or seeing teachers. And it was really, I'm really thankful that they all donated their time. And after that, it's really I'm really glad to see like the entire Lawrenceville community come together and see Laurentians of all different houses coming to set up the luminaries and just showing their support for women's space. We had almost 30 people, which was like a record for us, and we actually had a record time for setting up the luminaries. Last year it took two hours, but because we had so many volunteers this year, it only took around half an hour. For Main Street, I'm Isabella Feinberg. Thank you, Isabella. That is our show for Friday, December 18th. From all of us here at L10, thank you for watching, happy holidays, and good night.